One side of my head is straightened with a $500 straightener and the other with an $80 straightener. Can you tell which is which? Comment below either left or right for which you think is the $500 side. I'm a huge fan of Dyson. I have their vacuum, the blow dryer, and the air wrap. So when they announced a new product, the Corral Straightener, I was immediately intrigued. But at a price point of $500, is it really worth it? Every Dyson product comes backed with years of research, millions of dollars invested, and hundreds of prototypes. In the past, I've found all of these purchases to be a great investment as the innovations have given me long-term results. But a $500 straightener is leaving me very skeptical. So of course I had to buy it and try it out. $570 and a few days later, I had the corral at my doorstep. And this is what it looks like when you buy it. It comes in this wrapping, kind of like a gift. And it comes with this really nice silk pouch, which would be great for travel. And in case you live under a rock, here is what the Dyson Corral looks like. It comes with copper plates and it is rounded at the edge. And one thing you'll notice, it also extends a little bit longer and this part does not get hot. So that is helpful with styling. But you can't forget the charging cord and dock. So I just finished straightening my hair nice and everything but honestly it didn't really rock my world it kind of just felt like any other straightener literally i was pulling so hard to try and feel a difference but the experience was really not different for me as you can see my first use left me feeling underwhelmed so what could make this 500 dollars straightener worth it what's so different about it is it's flexing plates or micro hinged plate technology as dyson claims this rendering shows how the technology works when i take my dyson straightener i can't see the plates flexing, so it's hard to imagine what this actually means. But what I do notice is the straightener feels like a bungee as you press in, and it's kind of like a shock absorber, which does make it really good at grasping the hair tightly and distributing the heat really well. You'll see a typical straightener doesn't do this. In fact, it doesn't even clasp down all the way. As a result, it doesn't distribute the heat evenly when straightening the hair. But does this microscopic invention actually make that much of a difference on a whole head of hair? That is what I wanted to test out today. I will be comparing the Dyson Corral to the Paul Mitchell Pro Tools Express Ion Smooth Hair Straightener. They're both going to be at the 360 degree heat setting. It claims to smooth your hair with Ion Smooth technology, which sounds just about as bullshit as the micro hinge technology. Like either way, technology out the door, which is gonna do a better job for for a better price. This is gonna be Dyson side, this is gonna be the Paul Mitchell side. Let's just get started with one pass through each. So that is very nice and straight, nice and even, really did only need one pass. Wow, when I pick up the Paul Mitchell straightener, it feels so much lighter in comparison. It feels like it glides a little bit smoother, but it didn't get all the hair all the way straight right here. We're gonna have to do another pass through. So here we have both pieces. So far, I don't see a difference in these pieces. They both look really straight, really shiny, really nice. Now I'm just gonna run through with this whole first section. So here is the Dyson straightened side. I mean, it looks great, it's really shiny. This is the Dyson side here, Dyson. And this is Paul Mitchell side. Personally, I think these two sides look exactly the same. They both look really straight, really shiny, really nice. Obviously with the Dyson side, it came out 
perfectly straight. I mean, you can't deny the fact that it is an incredible straightener and it gets your hair very, very straight. Now I'm just gonna finish off Paul Mitchell side. But when I switch to the Paul Mitchell side, it's still really good at straightening the hair. When it's all said and done, I can just barely tell a difference at all. So all these pieces were with one pass through. I will say the Dyson does straighten your hair more evenly and as a result, everything's looking really, really nice. On this side, it wasn't quite as even. And so as a result, you can kind of see hair pieces chunking together. Does that make any sense at all? <laughs> on this side, every strand will just like fall like right on its own. On this side, it's like a little bit more PC and a, a little bit more not perfectly straight. But honestly, I mean, they both look really good, I think. The one area where you can really tell a difference is in these two front pieces. You see this one kind of still curves. It didn't get perfectly straight and these ones are really, really straight. Honestly though, I feel like a big takeaway here is both sides look really, really straight and I could barely tell the difference. That to me just tells me if your human eye can't really see that much of a difference, it's not really worth an extra $400. Like they feel the same. Honestly, the Paul Mitchell felt so much smoother going through my hair. This one still did pull a little bit. For $500, I would expect this to be as smooth as butter, and it honestly isn't. And now we're gonna quickly test how it works curling your hair with these straighteners. Both have the rounded edges. I'm assuming it's not gonna be an issue with either of these straighteners, so. We have a curl. Overall, it's pretty smooth. It does pull a little bit. Now, let's try it out with the Dyson. It is so handy to be able to grab this. And you know what? These are gliding really smooth. That's funny. These curls are just different looking, I swear. Here is the Dyson curled side. These do look a bit different, I will say. I don't know why. This one came out so much bouncier, whereas these curls, they're just really casual little beachy waves. Either way, they're both great straighteners for it, but I am really impressed with how the Dyson curled. Like, these are really, really nice curls. Now that I've just burnt the absolute integrity out of my hair, I can finally conclude. If you clicked on this video looking for a raving review giving you justification to buy the Dyson Curl Straightener, I have to tell you, I don't think that you should buy this straightener. For $500, it should feel life-changing and it just didn't live up to the standard I had for it. I will say this, is it the best straightener on the market? Probably. It did the better job straightening the hair and the technology makes sense. But with that said, it's still just a straightener and at the end of the day, it didn't look or feel that different from the $80 one. So, which Dyson product should should you really be going for? The Airwrap. This has completely changed my hair. I'm able to go from wet to dry and styled in about 20 minutes, saving me so much time. And it uses very low heat, which has made my hair so much healthier. If you're looking to get one Dyson product today, don't get the straightener, get the Airwrap. The Airwrap will change your life, and at a price tag of $500, it better be. With the Dyson Airwrap, it only takes me about 20 minutes to do my hair from wet to completely straight and styled. So I'm gonna show you guys how I do that really quick and how it is completely cut out even needing a straightener. It comes with several different attachments. I start with just this one, just the normal hair dryer. I'm gonna put it on the middle heat setting and then I'm gonna put it on the fastest air setting. I'm just gonna go through and rough dry my hair until it's about 80% dry. That took me actually less than two minutes on the clock. After that, I use this one, which is like a, a brush, but it's completely made out of plastic, but it just works really well. And then with the brush tool, I'm just brushing my hair. It's really, really simple. I take the brush on the bottom and the hair on the top so that I'm lifting upward so that it gives my hair more volume. And then I'm taking my other hand and I'm kind of pulling at the hair to give more tension, which is gonna leave it straighter and shiny. It usually takes three to four pass-throughs and then my hair is completely dry. It has volume to it. It's 
styled. It's so shiny and soft. There's no frizz and it stays in place all day long. And the best part about it is the entire time that I'm styling it, it's such minimal heat that I can touch the hair the whole time. In fact, I can place my hand on the hair dryer for a whole minute and it's not gonna burn my hand at all. So it truly is amazing that I'm able to get the same look as a blowout from a salon or just silky straight and shiny hair without that high heat setting. Now this is a product that I can wholeheartedly say is worth the investment. It's just the innovation in this makes sense. It still blows my mind every time I blow dry my hair that I can actually achieve a blowout at home that is just like the shiny hair of my dreams that I used to always wish that I could have. This thing, this thing gets your hair shiny, it gets it straight, it gets it styled, and it's able to do that using very minimal heat. So not only does it cut down on time and get my hair looking exactly like I walked out of a salon, but it also has kept it really healthy. With this product, I had not touched a hair straightener in months because I just didn't need it. If you're looking for any Dyson products, the Airwrap is the one that I would highly recommend. I think the straightener is just a bit overrated because at the end of the day, it's still a straightener, it's still a lot of heat on your hair, and it's still really bad for it. I hope this helped you make a decision on your next hot tools hair product that you're gonna buy, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.